project that I'm going to spend a little bit of time on, so make a presentation. The goal is really to provide a lot of details on a project that's moved very quickly the last couple of weeks. But what's interesting is one year ago, May 1st, 2018, was when we had the first discussion about retaining some lobbyists. And we did, um, over the course of time, retain those lobbyists to help us promote the I-90 Garfield Harvard Road, um, Harvard Improved Interchange and Local Roads. It's kind of a long um, list of words, so I'm going to go right down to what that project includes. And I, I really want to answer all the questions, but um, let me get through a lot of the data points because I think there's some uh, important and critical information. So this project um, I, includes four projects. There's, and if you talk to DOT, they look at it as one project, um, but here in Liberty Lake, we look at it as basically Harvard and Henry. But the project does include Barker Road Roundabout, it would be on the north side of I-90 at Cataldo, Harvard Road north, um, northbound lane, so that would be a new additional lane northbound, um, a widening of the bridge. Harvard Road westbound on-ramp, so that's um, currently in place, and this project would extend that on-ramp. And then finally, the Henry Road overpass. So those are, that's what the project scope looks like. So I'll go down to the next slide, and we'll talk about um, some pictures. So you can see on the far left is the Barker Road roundabout. Um, in the middle, you'll see Henry Road overpass, and it spans from Mission Avenue on the north to Henry Road on the south. Excuse me, that should be Kramer Road. Um, and then the Harvard Road um, widening and the westbound on ramp. So that's kind of um, where the project lies. Before I go on to the go on to the next slide, but I wanted to also speak to the importance of this project and why I think not only in our community from the city's perspective, bridges build connections, and to connect the north side of the Lake to the south side um, is just incredibly valuable. Public safety, our ability of our police officers on our fire. Um, service providers to get back and forth, especially during the peak hour commutes. With the new schools going in, people to be able to get from one, you know, one side of Liberty Lake to a school on the other side. There's just so much value in this project, which is, I think, why it was such a critical investment for our city. So, um, putting in a lot of work, there was a lot of moving pieces over the course of time, but the legislature passed the transportation budget April 27th, so that was a week ago Sunday. Um, the governor is expected to sign the budget the week of May 13th. I think um, the law says he has to sign the budget within 20 days of when the legislature passed the budget. So it's not a done deal yet. We're not expecting any changes, but it's not um, complete until the governor actually signs it. Um, the project estimate is a DOT estimate. It's $26.9 million. So what are those? It's broken into bienniums. So in the current biennium, there's $3.25 million. Those dollars have been spent. Um, going forward, um, there's $20,750,000 and $2.9 million in the next two bienniums as they're, as they're described. When you add those all up, it's 26.9. The funding that we got from the state is 20.9. And so the estimated delta, and I, I want to underscore estimate because this number can change. Um, over the course of the project. But right now that estimate is at $6 million. But again, I want to emphasize that that number can change. So I'm going to go down to the next slide. Um, so there's some other useful information. Um, so Liberty Lake, according to the, the way the law is written, and um, council members, I did make you a handout and there's a lot of data in there. But in essence, if we were to agree to the way the law is written, the City of Liberty Lake would be required to pay for all overages um, currently estimated at $6 million. So it could be more, it could be less. So I want to underscore that that number will change. And we won't know till the end of the project what it actually is. So it's a huge commitment by the city if we move forward. Um, the contract with DOT will require the City Council's approval. We have not, we've just begun, we had a, a brief, what I'll call a kickoff meeting um, with Mike Rudner last Friday, and that we have another meeting planned for next week. But again, they're putting together the, the um, boilerplate um, estimate, and then we need to do our best to get the best um, business points for the city on this project. But again, there is that risk, and I don't want to mention that there's not going to be risk in this project, but there's also potentials for savings. 
So let me talk about some of those things. With design, okay, WashDOT will not negotiate on who's going to manage the construction. They're going to manage the construction. They're going to manage the construction of the roundabout, the bridge widening, and the um, Henry Road construction, as well as the on ramp. That, um, they told us right off the bat that they're going to be um, the, what they call the CM on those projects. Um, on the design side, there are some opportunities where the City of Liberty Lake can uh, provide those services. And so design, geotech, survey, right-of-way acquisition, all of that is under discussion. We don't know for sure that DOT is going to agree to letting us manage those contracts. Um, I don't know if the intersection improvements at Country Vista and Mission, um, I don't know that they're included in the budget. We need to evaluate those estimates so we know what is included in DOT's estimates or not. Um, and then also, if there were savings, and we've identified a few uh, potential savings, that would be in the right-of-way acquisition potentially, in the design, and the um, other, um, we think the, the construction of the bridge winding might come in a little bit lower. So there are some potential savings, but again, we can't take that to the bank right now. So I'm just laying out the facts. Um, Harvard Road and Henry Roads, um, Okay, not Harvard Road, and that is a, I apologize, that is a um, misprint, it's not Harvard Road. It's Henry Road is identified in the TIF lift project list as an eligible project, um, but, and we all know what that means, it's included in the boundary, um, it's potentially identified for funding, but again... Um, okay, I'm sorry, you're saying Harvard's... That's, Harvard that's is not, and that is a, I apologize, that is a typo on number seven, which I should not have included um, Harvard Road in that, it's just Henry Road, um, so basically it's the River District, and then it drops down to Country Vista between Harvard and the over, excuse me, between Henry and the flyover. So I dropped the, the map that right <coughs> anyone wants to look at. Um, you can find it in there. Um, so anyway, that is um, the information. I, I do want to say, too, over the course of this project, there were a lot of different scenarios, um, different fundings were talked about from um, 18 million to 20 to 22, and so there was a lot of um, conversations, and uh, this is, we didn't know until the budget came out exactly what it was going to say and um, what the contribution from the state. Uh, again, what our lobbyists told us, and I think you picked up on this in some of our updates, was this was a very challenging legislative year, and not very many projects in the Spokane County got funded. There were two um, I-90 improvements at, um, in the West Plains near Amazon and this project. And so it was a very competitive year for many, many different reasons. And um, we, were, we were successful in, in our application and moving those funds from a you know, future biennium out to 27 and 29, moving them into the current biennium. But that doesn't mean that we're still not going to be required to participate financially. So with that, I'm going to answer any questions that council have. Okay. And just to remind the citizens, uh, when we hired the lobbyists, it involved the city, the fire department, and the school district. So it's a great collaboration from that standpoint. As citizens look at the list, and it's good clarification for the citizens to understand, this is a question for getting the mayor to answer. Um, you look at the list of the four projects, and one of those pieces include Barker, and citizens might wonder, how did we go about getting Barker included in that, and was the Valley involved in any way, shape, or form? Um, thank you, um, Mayor Pro Tem. So Barker, um, I hate to go back too far in history, but in about 2012-2013, WashDOT did what's called an IJR on Barker Road. That's an uh, interchange justification study and they found that Barker Road was deficient. They, being washed out, wanted to redo all of Barker Road, the overpass, the structure, and the approaches at Cataldo on the north and Broadway on the south. And they had the justification, in other words, they go through this, it's a very technical review, they had the justification to do that project. Um, the project never got funded. And so, in about 2013, 2014, we got um, Senator Patton to put in $26.9 million, and he earmarked that for, and Mayor, you're going to have to correct me if I'm wrong, but he, he earmarked it for the project you're seeing today, which is Harvard, the, Harvard Barker, um, and Henry. And if you ask DOT, they look at this again, I keep saying that, they look at this as one project. 
And so the, if you were to say, boy, the Valley um, got a great deal because they're not going to have to contribute, I think they might think of it as, well, we used to have $26.9 million, and today we just have a roundabout. So I can't speak for the Valley, but certainly they didn't get their full project out of this scenario. The project dollars got spread out over four projects. Does that help? Yeah, were they aware of, of this? Or yes. Any voice? Well, they were aware of their lobbyists, and they were aware of, of projects going on out here. They were supportive of it uh, from, from the standpoint of this was their project. So, um, Councilor Brickner, when we put this sheet together, we put all the partners down right. here, and Central, or excuse me, Spokane Valley weighed in. I will just, you know, I don't speak for Spokane Valley, but my understanding is this was not their number one priority. This was not a project that um, they were going to uh, advance. They were interested in getting funding for the Pine um, inter, um, Great, Great Separation, Bridge yeah, Bridging the Valley. So this was, this was, they were putting a lot of lobbying efforts into this project. I was going to hear that they were supportive of it. Yeah. A quick question. So, so, so given that um, Spokane Valley, maybe I think they, I choose my words carefully, maybe I think they're going to Group. Sorry, that's the one word I come up with uh, with regards to their Barker project as what it used to be versus what they're coming out with. What are the chances of them saying, forget it, we don't want the roundabout, we're going to try again for the full project? It's a DOT project, it's in DOT right away. Is that, that's basically, basically stuff that the design is almost made, right? Correct. So they gave design. the Valley a million dollars to design the roundabout, and then DOT will be the construction manager on the project. Well, the Excuse me, Mr. Sutton, they've already given the valve. Right, so go back to my design model. <coughs> they gave, so remember I told you that if you look at that $3.2 million in 1719, uh -huh. that's today. We got 800000 to do the design of the on ramp in Harvard. They got a million dollars to do the roundabout. And so those dollars in, in line 3A have been spent. Okay. So they so, got money to do the design. So begs the question, are we going to pay to redo a design? Are we going to use their design? What? Okay, so the Valley designed the roundabout. DOT is going to take that design and get a contractor to bid on it, and bid. then DOT is going to manage the contractor. Our design on Harvard um, is about 60%. When it gets complete, then we turn it over to DOT to be right. bid on it. Right, but we don't have to redesign or no, we don't no, redesign no. the other the only other thing I wanted to mention, I think earlier when you first started out, you mentioned that when we all met together with our lobbyists, okay, I attended those meetings and I can guarantee you, we did not hire lobbyists to include anything to do with the city of the valley. You're absolutely correct, and which so means, yes. Not, they were not hired to handle that, okay, they weren't hired to look into it or to lobby for it. It was just on ours. So if we spent money every month for those lobbyists to go talk to the senators, the legislature, the transportation committees, under the premise that we were going to try to obtain funds for Harvard and for Henry, at what point did Barker get inserted and why haven't we heard that from those people that we've been paying as legislators? to tell us that it got changed to include that. So I want to be very clear. Over the whole course of this project, our lobbyists never lobbied for Barker. They did talk to the lobbyists from the Valley to find out if the Valley wanted to partner with this effort. And the answer was no. Okay. So when you look at this sheet that we use as a fact sheet, DOT was very critical if we went, if we Liberty Lake went out on our own without including Barker, because I can't underscore it up. DOT looks at this as one project, and they, if we didn't include Barker here, and Senator Patton insisted that we include Barker, so but if you read this, it says Barker is under the direction, is under someone else's jurisdiction. So we were very careful, Councilor Lankford, never to have our lobbyists spend any time on lobbying for, for the construction of the Barker Road improvements. And here we are getting ready to take it over, pay all the overages for it, the city of the valley, or are they throwing in maybe some help on the overages? No. 
So again, what about our partnership with these great partners that we have? The uh, fire department, the school district, you know, they've been great. And they were included in the funding for the legislators, for the lobbyists. Are they kicking into this project? We don't know yet. We're still in the negotiation stages. No. So okay. if, if, that's an, if that's important to the council, then well, please. Do you think it would be important? To well, I think, I think, think they're okay. Tony, I think to your point, well, I was just speaking with her, okay? And I was just wondering, right? I think we've already got the answer. The answer is we don't know. Well, to your point, you talked about our partners and how they can participate or how they do participate. Mm -hmm. You know, they did participate in the lobbying on the behalf of Andrew and Harvard because mm -hmm. of the safety issue. Sure. Ben Small was, uh, uh, was pleased that I think that the roundabout on the north side was included because of the buses that's so that gives them better access to, to the Blue Parker. Mm -hmm. I think in, if you look back in the, in the, the vehicles that we've chosen to, to bring forward to help um, pay for Henry and these projects, the lift, um, the fire department, as mentioned earlier this evening, was a big participant in that because they funded a portion of the tip. This, you so know, I'm just going back to they, they to have protection here back to something that happened many years ago. You can do that if you want to. Well, I, but I the, like current, to that the because current is that there has been no indication or solicitation from what I can see on behalf of city, uh, city of Nabili to ask these partners to join in with the estimated delta, which doesn't even include overruns. Okay? So we got a lot of work to do in a very short period of time. Okay? I have no doubt that they'll probably be participating. I was just asking whether or not they've even been asked yet. Can yeah. I add to just a point of clarification in the handout? When you look at page 66 um, on number 27, it's highlighted on the side, and it says this $6 million of the motor vehicle account hyphen private slash local, that is us. It doesn't say that we like, but that is us. So I'm sorry, Councilor Kennedy. No, I'm just going to ask that question. What I'm understanding is that I understand the separation of Barker and they had funds pretty much guaranteed to them for the north and south of Barker. That's where the million dollars, I understand, comes in. Because I understand it was about $450,000 was assigned to design the roundabout on the, on the north side. So what I'm understanding is that Libby Lake at this point, the mayor, council, or staff has not had any, you know, any conversations with the Spokane Valley. I've to so, participate in this? So let me, I talked to their um, assistant deputy, well, their deputy city manager, and we have, I mean, no. So have I asked them to contribute dollars to this project? The answer is no. Um, but we've had, Mr. Mayor, we've had negotiations or any discussions with them to partner on this or you know, anything about funding back to us or anything? No, it hasn't been that way. In fact, you know, to, to us, and kind of the reason why we started this process down the road is our priorities have been Harvard, right. Henry, and Barker's on the last of our list, <coughs> correct? Um, never even mentioned this. Yeah, I mean, as I'm saying, but it's on the last of the list. Um, and from a standpoint of uh, costs, I mean, we assume that like we told them, you've committed or the, the, the number that you put into the bill or you know the, the, the account was two point three million dollars for that roundabout. In my opinion, we built four roundabouts or three roundabouts now. Pardon? Yeah. There's yeah, for, there's a lot of complexity. Three quarters of million dollars each. Yeah. And they have brick and so forth. So mm -hmm. we assume that they're what two point three million dollars more than sufficient money to cover that roundabout. And if you can build that roundabout for, let's say, $1.3 million, $1.5, that savings gets credited to Liberty Lake in the six million. It was my understanding, that somebody knows better than correct, correct me, but my understanding that the state or DOT pretty much had guaranteed the majority of, I mean, a big chunk of money for Harvard, or I'm sorry, uh, Barker Road. So, that's now thrown in with us. 
but we do have to understand that even though that big chunk came to us in this 20.9, any overages on Barker will be our responsibility. I would describe it because I think the words we choose are very, very important. If the DOT doesn't look at it as four projects, it's one project. Right. And if there's any overages, whether it's Barker, Harvard, Henry, it doesn't matter where it came from, the city of Liberty Lake would be responsible for it. Right, and I want this I want the citizens and council to understand that, that we could save here, so, which I'm hopeful in some areas, and my cost is more over there. So Barker is part of that. Right. And then just for purposes of clarification, Barker wrote roundabout design and construction according to the fact that the estimates we got from DOT is two point three million of the twenty of the twenty six point nine. So all of the $26.9 million that DOT has price tag that they put on that project, 2.3 is for the roundabout at Barker. So the difference is for Harvard, Henry, and the on ramp including design and construction and right away. So just, it's a, there's a scalable consideration I want to give. Well, that's, that's steps. Right. So next step, so we're setting up a time next week to go to begin looking at a contract with WashDOT employees. Um, I, you know, if you guys have questions along the way, don't hesitate to call myself or, or Scott. The other thing, because there's going to be so much information, I wanted to go to my very last slide and encourage everyone to come to the city's website or our Facebook page because we want to use that. Um, I saw Anita here, so she's helping us. Uh, keep everything current on our website and um, so that share these links so that people can um, get information uh, on our Facebook and our, and our website. But again, um, our next step is to bring back information regarding the negotiations with Washington on the, on the interagency agreement. Okay. Mike? Looking at the overall scope of everything we're doing in Liberty Lake, as we move forward, I think we really have to be totally conscientious that we're looking at Trailhead, we're looking at this pro project that we didn't know what the dollar amount was going to be, and we're not going to know the end result of this until probably 2022, so, somewhere in there. So we are operating with a blank check on that. This has to have some impact for our consideration of what we're doing elsewhere, which includes Trailhead, uh, other properties we own, other ideas we have going on, because this is something we're going to be tied into for the next couple of years. Uh, so I think we have to be very conscientious and, and not so much to the point of thinking, well, hold up, we can borrow and build a lot of stuff here. Because it still comes down to how do we pay for it? How do we service our citizens and keep the transparency going, which I think at times really has suffered. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, Mayor, I want to go down. I'll speed up my pace a little bit. The next item is uh, election registration, just so that...